In about a month from now, the British will vote in a general election. And this may sound dramatic, but it's well documented. Pakistan is trying to infiltrate the British Parliament. On our cover story tonight, we'll explain how, with reports and documents that show how Pakistan is trying to tilt British politics and policymakers to push its agenda. No prizes for guessing whose brainchild this plan is. Pakistan's old and infamous dirty tricks department, the ISI. Let me explain how this works. The Labour Party is the principal opposition party in the UK. Vion has learned that the ISI is pushing its people into the Labour Party. Basically, Pakistan is sponsoring memberships to the Labour Party. How does that help? The party cadre will be overwhelmingly Pakistani. They form a pressure group, a group that forces Labour leaders to toe the Pakistan line. And this comes at a critical time. British politics, as we've been saying, is in a mess. Next month, they'll have the third general election in four years. Brexit has triggered a long period of political turmoil, and Pakistan wants to muddle the pool further by hijacking the agenda of one leading party. Now, you may ask this question. Why should Labour leaders follow what their new Pakistani members say? Because they're bound by a law. This law is called the right to recall. Recall a member of parliament. This law was passed in 2015, and what it says is quite simple. A lawmaker, an MP, can lose their seat if the people are not happy with their work. Of course, there are certain conditions for this right to recall, but this law is basically used to build pressure. The electoral system of the UK is quite similar to, to what we have here in India. Any politician who wants a ticket should be ideally popular and have popular support in their constituency. The Labour Party encourages community-based campaigning. The party has local party offices across the country. Any politician who wants to win must have the support of the local party office. And it is these offices, local party offices, that Pakistan wants to hijack. This is an infiltration, one that can compromise politics in Britain. By building up its own army within the Labour Party, the ISI can arm twist lawmakers at will. It can force them to push Islamabad's agenda in the British Parliament, even harass these MPs with repeated right to recall petitions. The lawmaker will have no option then but to listen because his or her core support base will be Pakistani-sponsored members of the Labour Party. So where does this party stand? The Labour is fighting back to win power. Gordon Brown was the last Labour leader to sit on the Prime Minister's chair, and that was nine years ago. And the party has lost every election since then, and they've seen more than their fair share. In recent months, the Labour Party has received considerable flack from the Indian leadership, mainly due to its pro-Pakistan tilt. The current leader of this party, Jeremy Corbyn, backs the Pakistani line on Kashmir. He's openly courting British Pakistanis, Jeremy Corbyn. Most of them support the Labour. In fact, their vote can tip the scales in at least 30 seats in the UK. As of 2011, more than 1 million British Pakistani citizens were eligible to vote in the UK. They form 2% of the British population. British Indians form 2.5%. We reached out to several Labour leaders today to seek a response on this story and all of them, I can tell you, responded but refused to issue a statement. It's quite clear now, Jeremy Corbyn wants these votes on his side and he's doing everything he can to keep this vote bank happy. He backed the demand for international intervention on Kashmir. He spoke to Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan recently. Some of his own party leaders have protested against his pro-Pakistan stance. Keith Vaz is one of them, a member of the Labour Party. He has criticised his leader. Keith Vaz is the longest serving British MP of Indian origin. He has demanded the withdrawal of his party's emergency resolution on Kashmir. Two months ago, the Labour Party passed what they called this emergency resolution. It called for an international intervention in the Kashmir dispute. Keith Vaz said that this resolution is divisive, misguided and unhelpful. 